Hi, my name is Natalia Trefon. I forgot I have a second name. My name is Natalia Trefon Ochepka, and I am an indigo instructor from Tarnowskie Góry. Today we'll do a styling using colors from the new Summer Trio collection. We'll also try out two interesting tricks to make the designs even more interesting. Let's get going. We put out all of our colors, one by one, onto the nail art palette. Raspberry Girl, Orange Gatan, Juicy Elo Pompello, Bonanciaga, and Art Brillante in Black Poison. We'll use it at the very end, but we can get it onto the palette right away. We will need three brushes, Aquarel Sting, Master Art 007, and Master Art 004. We start with prep nails with a buffed surface, on which we can start working right away. I rather think that you should not wipe the surface with any cleaners at this point. I will work straight on this buffed, carefully dusted off surface with a thin 007 brush. I gently mark a shape resembling a triangle. I don't put the whole amount on straight away. I leave the top at the top and only roughly drag it toward the bottom because we'll be using different colors there. I change the brush to a thicker one, that is the Aquarel Sting, and one by one I gently fill it with color and immediately shade it. Now I move on to orange. The first is the darkest of our three, orange gatan. I apply it gently and immediately start shading. I make a patting movement at the same time, sort of drag it down a bit. I change the color to Elo Pompello and then Bonanciaga at the very end. I wipe it gently on a pad and now, very flatly, drag it across the whole triangle. Don't worry that the ombre is not looking perfect, because in a moment we'll use a magical product which will single-handedly make it more beautiful. Here, for a change, we'll do a different shape, so the design will be a tad geometrical. And again, I only sketch the initial shape and add colors, so Raspberry Girl, Orange Gatan, Elo Pomelo, and Bonanciaga. Again, we wipe any excess product from the brush onto a pad and start gently tapping down the ombre starting at the very top. I move in steps from left to right and at the same time I constantly drag the brush downwards. The second nail is done. Again, Raspberry Girl and like on the previous nails, Orange Catan, Elo Pomelo and Bonanciaga at the very bottom. Now, in comes our magical product, the Fashion Clear. It's a colorless acrylic powder, which is our lifesaver when creating any kind of ombre. This acrylic will help you beautifully shade and blend even when using gel polishes. So, now we sprinkle the wet surface of what we just painted with the acrylic. Remember to do it quite generously. I sprinkle each design even three to four times. I check for any remaining shiny spots and make sure I don't accidentally touch the decoration with my cuticle pusher because that could unfortunately ruin it. If you now notice that the product is still shiny in an area, you can go ahead and sprinkle that part of the nail one more time. We cure it for 30 seconds in a multi-LED lamp. On hand, we have our cupcake brush. This is a very important moment because if we were to leave a layer of loose powder on the nail, even though it has already been cured, when adding another layer of product, it could all clump up. And then the decoration would simply not come out right. Now it's all cured, we dust it off with a soft brush and begin shading. I need a lot less product now, because it is a lot easier to shade an ombre on such a matte surface. Therefore, regardless of whether the colors before the acrylic layer shaded well for you, 
Now, thanks to this layer, it is much easier, and you can already see that the ombre looks a lot more attractive. So don't worry about the first layer at all. And again, we go from Raspberry Girl, Orange Catan, Elo Pomelo, and for the very bottom, Benanciaga. At the same time, we pat a little and drag the brush downwards. See that now the ombre looks much better? If you notice that somewhere is not blended well, you can easily clean the brush and go over it again to correct it. Now we can work on three nails at the same time, which will speed up your work when creating a set of decorated nails, like this one. Again, we start with a strip of Raspberry Girl at the top, use very little product when applying this layer onto acrylic, because you will still need to remove any excess, so to avoid adding any extra work, start with a tiny amount. At the same time, we blend after the application. In fact, this will only be the background of our design. Now the last nail. Regardless of whether you make an ombre with a brush, whether you do it vertically, horizontally, or on a section, acrylic will work great for you. And again, we cure it for 30 seconds in the lamp. Another surprise I have for you here is the new snow dot top. But spoiler alert, snow won't fall onto your nails for another two weeks. Snow dot top coat launches on the 16th of August. We'll use it for this styling. What is this product? It's a top coat with no dispersion layer that has these beautiful, snow-like white particles. Of course, it will be perfect for covering a single color styling. But we will use it for this decoration. We try to cover with the top coat only those parts of the nail where we did the shading. So now I apply a little bit at a time. I reach for a thin brush. In this case, it will be the 004, and we drag it out gently. It's important not to apply the product too thickly, so if you notice the top coat getting bumpy, you can remove any excess. We are after those stunning particles, so we need to apply a very thin layer. If you accidentally move the brush somewhere past the lines, don't worry at all, because we will continue to create something. And in the same way, apply a bit of top coat on the third nail, and if there is excess, if you see that the product is creating a mini bump somewhere, it is better to remove the excess immediately. The nail's covered, so we cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. The next step is covering the entire styling with super matte. We cover the entire styling with it. For example, in an ombre, and we treat it as a matte layer into which the pigment particles penetrate better, so it is easier to create an ombre. We push the cuticles back with a pusher. I always do it one by one, especially if I'm applying a top coat. I'd rather do it a little slower, but be certain that the top coat will be well applied. I apply super matte also on the nails with no design. This will bring the whole set together. And now, many people think that if we have the super matte, and it is a matte surface, we can afford some small shortcomings. That is, we do not have to keep an eye on the line of light. But, unfortunately, this is not the case. So, now we are paying attention to the line of light. We can see it when the top is not yet cured, as it is still shiny. Now, it has to be perfect because if, for example, I don't keep an eye on the line of light, the uneven surface of the nail will be visible, even though it is matte. So, using a thin 007 brush, we even out the surface. And now, as it's still shiny, I can see if the line of light is even. 
I freeze cure it for about 15 seconds in the lamp and move on to the next nail. If you have a styling where you cover the nails with a top coat, but you work one at a time and don't cover all your nails with a top coat at once, you can use the freezing method. Don't be afraid, nothing bad will happen. 15 seconds in the lamp, another nail, and then the last one for the final curing time. Now I'm trying to equalize the level between the decoration and the nail. Because even though the decoration is applied quite thinly, the difference in levels is visible. That's why I take a little more top coat and compensate for the difference with the extra amount. Don't treat it as an overlay on the nail, because you shouldn't overlay with top coats, but you can add a little bit extra to even it all out. We coat the middle finger and again level out the difference in height between the ornament and the smooth surface of the nail. Then cure it in the lamp. We also cover the index fingernail with supermat. And of course, since there is also an ornament here, we ensure an even level. We freeze cure it and all that's left is to cover the thumb with supermat. We drive it up neatly under the cuticles. I am using the brush from the bottle. I don't drive the product up using a thin brush, but using the bottle brush I gently push the product up. However, if it's easier for you, you can use a thin brush when applying a top coat too. In my opinion, you should always use whatever is more comfortable. If you prefer working with the brush from the bottle, just do it. And now we cure it for a minute. We move to the next phase of the styling, and here we will need the help of Art Brillante. In order to pick up a bit of this product onto our brush, knowing we want to create a thin line, we cannot pick up too much of it. Because if we pick up too large a quantity, have a look here, it's starting to run towards the base. We would not be able to draw a thin line with this brush. So, if you end up picking the product up like this, put the excess aside, somewhere on the palette, so that there is almost nothing left on the bristles. So, the brush needs to be stained, but not dripping with product. A stained brush at hand, we can start with the main ornament. We begin at one-third of the nail. Drag downwards. Don't be scared. I'm going on to the design I did earlier. Because, as I mentioned before, it will act as the background for our ornament. I pick up a bit more onto the brush and start applying a drop flatly. I do it all in one go. This angle is about 45 degrees to the stem I drew, so you shouldn't just paint sideways at this point, because it won't look good. I paint slightly at an angle upwards. We do the other side in exactly the same way. Now I don't touch the first main line at all. I leave a space of about a millimeter, half a millimeter. I clean the brush, drag it upwards very thinly, pull out these kinds of tails from the dots and go upwards first. I turn the brush towards me, and gently blend it with my main line. And the same with the opposite side. And now we have two options for finishing the decoration. For fans of half gloss and half matte, we can leave the decoration as it is. That is, shiny, because Art Brillante can be safely left on the surface of the top coat. I don't need to protect it with anything. I don't need to cover it with a top coat, it can stay that way. But to make the decoration more attractive, we can also make it matte. So now, before curing, I reach again for the Fashion Clear acrylic and sprinkle it lightly. The rule is the same as with making an ombre. 
meaning I sprinkle until I cannot see any shiny areas on the design surface. Freeze curing here should take about 30 seconds. Ultimately, we need to cure this decoration for one minute. To ensure that the decoration hardens deeply and penetrates through the acrylic, the curing time should be doubled. So, if curing in our multi-LED lamp usually takes 30 seconds, with this decoration we have to cure it for a minute. I gently remove the excess with a soft brush and move on to the next nail. To make it easier for me to draw the line in this direction, it will be more convenient for me to simply turn the hand over. I take a very small amount of the product onto the brush and gently swipe using the tip of the brush. Here I will also create a branch, but in a different style than on the previous nail. It is important that the design matches the overall composition, but we do not have to do the exact same thing. Every now and then I take a little bit of the product onto the brush and stain it again so that I can draw a thin line. I turn the hand over. Here we will create a shape resembling a tree branch and decorate it with leaves. I start by applying the dots in bulk. Of course, you can make these leaves individually from beginning to end. But to speed up the work, we can paint the dots all at once. But by now you need to know what this decoration is supposed to look like in the end. I wipe the brush from the excess product once more. First, I pull out the sharp tips and connect them to the branch. To work in the other direction, we turn the hand again to face us. I pull a thin line from each dot, a tiny point of each leaf, and connect it to the main line. You need to maneuver your hand so that each movement feels comfortable. We reach for the acrylic powder again. Don't forget to turn the nail sideways to avoid a situation in which you only sprinkle the design from the top and by the side walls. By the edges, it won't be properly coated. In that case, it won't look good because part of the pattern will be matte and the bits inaccurately sprinkled with the acrylic powder will look like something accidentally got stuck to them. Now we freeze cure in the lamp. We dust it off gently and move on to the third design. Actually, it's a continuation of what we have here, but in a slightly different style. I lightly stain the brush with black art brillante. I drag down a line. Here I add two more lines on one side and one line on the other side. I try to aim the drop so that they are not at the same level as the ones on the other side. And I remember to finish them off. Another branch and drops. To apply from the other side, it will be most convenient to simply turn the hand over and alternate. Since this decoration is a bit different than on the previous nails, I will not pull the needle upwards, but simply gently connect the drops with the branch using a practically clean brush. It is a little stained with Art Berlante, but there is no product on it. If I had the product on it now, the connection between the drops and the branch would be very thick and the decoration would lose its daintiness. I think I'll add one more branch because I feel like something is missing here. This area seems a little empty. If while decorating you see that something could be added to make the design more appealing, then despite the fact you're already halfway through it, you can always modify it as you see fit. We wipe the brush dry and using the very tip, gently connect the drops with the branch. We reach for the acrylic powder one more time, Sprinkle generously and cure the whole lot for 60 seconds in the multi-LED lamp. 
Thoroughly dust off any of the excess powder using a soft brush. Now the styling is so durable thanks to the double curing that even if I scratched it with my nail, nothing at all will happen to it. And this is exactly what this double curing time gives us when covering decorations with acrylic powder. Sadly, this is the end of our episode. Sadly or not, because this means our styling is ready. You can copy this design. I hope you will give it a go and be sure to let us know in the comments below how it turned out.